from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Welcome here to Wake Up Call, Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. I hope you all had a tremendous and phenomenal weekend. I hope you had some fun. I hope you spent some time with family, friends, loved ones, coworkers, colleagues, the lady, the gentleman in your life, whatever it may be, your, your pups, your cats, your fish, hanging out with yourself. <clears throat> Maybe you had some me time this weekend. Maybe you did something nice for yourself, whatever it was, wherever you are, happy Monday. And don't ever treat Monday like it's a bad day. You know why? Because God woke you up today. Because it's another day of the week. It's another opportunity to feel fulfilled. It's another opportunity to live life to the fullest. It's another opportunity to chase your dreams and follow your dreams and love your life. I appreciate it. I appreciate every single one of you, and I appreciate life. And yesterday was my birthday birthday. So, you know, I can't believe yesterday was my birthday. I I always, like, as soon as my birthday ends, I'm like, when's October 21st? And I never wish time away. I just love my birthday. I love 1021. To me, it will always be a special number. And uh, a beautiful, beautiful day. Next year, my birthday goes back to when, you know, I I was born, like, back to everything. I was born on a Monday, October 21st, 1985 at 8.37 a.m. So, you know, next year it goes back to that for for 2K19. But, uh, yeah, yesterday was my birthday. And I want to thank everybody. I'm going to try and make sure. I remember everybody that came out. Shout out to Rob, to Mark, to Trish, to Raphael, Jordan, John, Elaine, Jimmy, James, Kate, uh, James's girlfriend. I'm trying to think here. My mom, my dad. Am I missing anybody? LJ, Joey. I want to thank everybody. They came out. I want to thank Eric for brunch, and I want to thank our diner for for a banging frit Todd. So good, and uh, I want to thank Eric's dad and stepmom. I want to thank who am I missing here? I want to thank Johnny, and I want to thank all my messages on Facebook. You know, everybody that that sends something over on Facebook. It was. It was in in it was tremendous. It really was. I mean, uh, we raised some money for my birthday. That was good. So I want to thank I want to thank everybody, man, uh, for all the birthday wishes. I want to thank my parents for being absolutely amazing, and I want to thank everybody for helping me pull it off. You know, I, this has been a really difficult time in my life, and I kind of just a couple days ago I said to my mom and my dad like I just want to have people over. I want to have good memories in my house. I want to live life to the fullest, and I want to be surrounded by love, and I just want to laugh, and I want to have fun, and just be around be around people that, that love me and, and people that I care about, and that's what happened. So, and everybody that came out, I mean, God, we had so much fun. We, we, just, we just had a great time, and my friends are the best. And I got to tell you all how much I love you. I know that you guys already know. I want to thank Evan. I want to thank Nick. I want to, you know, I want to thank Ross. You know, some of my friends couldn't make it. I want to thank my brothers Nico and Miguel. I want to thank my aunt Donna. So, you know, I, everybody: Papa Joe, Mary, Joey, Stacia, Aunt Jeannie, everyone. So. You know, everybody made my birthday and and makes my life, you know, amazing and and what it is. So, you know, I hope that, you know, when when you're spending your birthday and and you're doing some cool things, you know, that that you just remember that the stuff doesn't matter, you know, like the, 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 
the prizes of of being <laughs> of it being your birthday don't matter, so to speak. You know, the stuff to me that really, really, really matters is, you know, just the camaraderie, the friendship, the family. And my family is vast, man. I'm. <laughs> It is vast. It's beautiful. I want to thank Utica Pizza Company, as always, for awesome pizza. We got pepperoni pizza, cheese pizza, chicken reggie pizza, the Utica-style wings, banging, just everything. I want to thank Trish for bringing so – Trish brought, uh, so, like, the party, and she brought all this stuff. Uh, my, my parents brought all these drinks and snacks and – and my mom, my mom knows how to have a party. Like ever since I was a little kid, and like the Lynches would come over, like always. Ever since I was little, we always had peanut M and M's and regular M and M's. And I never, I didn't even ask my mom for that. Like the Cooler Ranch Doritos, the peanut M and M's, the the regular M and M's. Like my mom's just, you know, we're getting the party started, and she's just put a bowl out. She opens up a bag, pours them in like it's nothing, you know. I just have the best mom in the world, and my dad has has been so um, wonderful during this time, and so great and and caring. My friends have been amazing. Uh, you, my listeners, have been have been tremendous. I had the best birthday, and, and in all honesty, I wanted to keep going. So I'm going to treat every day like my birthday, and I'm going to tell you what that means before we get into our conversation with Marvin Graves. Treating every day like your birthday is. This is what you need to do. Be yourself. Love yourself. Love your life. Love that God gave you a chance. Be around people that care about you and love you. Don't worry about the people that don't wish you a happy birthday. Don't concern yourself with the people that they don't wish you a happy birthday. They're not there for your birthday. Don't care about your birthday. The people that are trying to hurt you don't matter. You know, they're broken. Broken people do bad things. And you could be broken as a good person and choose to do a good thing. But, you know, uh, people that are, I shouldn't say broken, people do bad things because we all, we all are broken at times. People who don't love themselves do bad things. And that's, so, that's them. But you, you know, be better than that. Be stronger than that. Be more than that. And just love yourself. Every day can be your birthday when you surround yourself with family and friends that you're close with and that you love and that you cherish and that you appreciate, you know, that that's where love comes from. Love comes from being good to yourself and being good to other people and, and caring about their sanity and their health and their happiness and, and yours as well. Um, you know, I made a mistake growing up in life where I did the right thing by caring about everybody else, but I didn't take care of myself. And, and and now that's different, and it's it's going to continue to get better and, and be uh, different in a good way. So, you know, every day can be your birthday, man. You don't have to get gifts every day. But, you know, when, when people are like, today is for me. Today, if there's any day that's for me, it's today. Today is my birthday. You have to spend it on me. You have to appreciate me. Well, that could be every day. Not in a cocky way, but appreciate yourself every day. Spend every day having fun. Spend every day calling people that you love and spending time with people that you love. And remember that time by yourself to reflect and to sit and listen to music or sing or draw or watch some TV, that's all healthy too. It's okay to be alone. It's not okay to shut yourself off from the world, so to speak, in the sense of, you know, kind of detaching yourself from people that care about you it's okay to have a moment everybody needs a moment but you know just know that there's people that love you and and care about you and and darn it I do I love each and every single one of you and I might never meet you but I love you you know why because you're spending some time with me this morning and you're giving me a chance and, and and you're appreciating me and I'm appreciating you right back so you know life is meant to be enjoyed so go out and enjoy it. And I came up this morning and said, you know, first couple minutes of the show, I want to talk about my birthday. I can't find the perfect words. All I can say is thank you to every single person that has been by my side, especially now. Thank you. And that, that made it about my birthday and didn't make it about other garbage. I just, 
I love my friends and my friends are my family and, and I, I love, I love my parents. I love my aunt. I love my cousins. I love Papa Joe and Mary and, 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 and Joey and Stacia and you just all mean a lot. So thank you for stepping up. I mean, I can say at 32 years old that my first friend and all my friends that I made, uh, you know, within the last few years or few months, we're, we're there at my, at my party, you know, 32 years and, and, and shout out to James and then everybody else. And, you know, life is good, man. Life is good. And I went on a lucky seven scratch off, which my grandma and grandpa used to always get me. And I got it for my grandma and grandpa. And everybody's like, how much did you do? I want four bucks. I don't care if I want 25 cents. Whenever I win on those, I always like think it's my grandma and grandpa being like, hey, buddy, how are you? Hey, I love you. So um, to my G-mama, to Gammy, to Pop, uh, Pop Miller, Pop Cavino, uh, Papa, my adopted Pop, to Rob, uh, E that passed on, to Dustin, to J, H that passed on. To my 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 uh, my animals, my furry loving friends, and and all my my little my pets, uh, Sunny Magic Daredevil. I had a fish named Daredevil. He was awesome. Shady Mordu Cinnamon. You know, to all my great aunts and my great uncles. I miss you, and I, Uncle Pete, Uncle Pete. I, I just I I miss I miss y'all. And I love you all, and I hope you're with me. I know you are, and I just want you to know I appreciate it. And uh, I love you to pieces. So let's take a step aside. Let's get Marvin Graves on the show. I had the best birthday. And because I'm a giant child and I will always be this way, I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to just keep enjoying my birthday, which means keeping my focus on the things that are positive and important and staying away from the things that are bad. I'll take a step aside for a fast break. We will be back right after this with Marvin Graves, Monday morning quarterback this morning, talking with us on the Q's. Overtime comeback victory, Syracuse and Tommy DeVito. We'll get into that in just a moment. And then in the second hour of the show, God help me, I'm going on the prowl speaking on the Jacksonville Jaguars and how the wheels have completely fallen off of a team that should have been contending. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. This is Jimmer Sikowski, owner-operator of Chick-fil-A Cicero, 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, right in front of the Home Depot. I had a deep feeling that God wanted me to do something bigger with my life and to help people, help others. I kept putting Chick-fil-A in my life, and I realized as I was going through the franchise selection process that uh, positively impacting the lives of others was really core to what we do here at Chick-fil-A. First of all, it starts with the food. The food is brought in fresh daily you know we bring in local produce we prepare to order in the kitchen we hand bread our chicken we hand spin our milkshakes it's it's great food it doesn't taste like fast food i, I think the second thing is is the way people feel when they come in a chick-fil-a restaurant it's different we, we try to treat people with intentional kindness here which is very different and deeper than good customer service and so you know, i think it feels remarkable for most people to come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant. And then lastly, the impact that we try to have in the community is very different. It's a big part of the expectation of every operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant is that they're actively engaged in their community, they're a leader in the community, and they're, they're making a difference. When they realize that what we're striving to do is to shine a little light in their life, that's a very, very different experience uh, than you will have in any other quick service restaurant. And it's that remarkable experience that I think people will emotionally connect with. I'm George Townsend of Honda City with some good advice from buying a new car. The true cost of owning a new car is determined by the appraised value when you trade it. No vehicle appraises higher than a Honda. Next, look for low APRs and deep discounts. You also want low maintenance costs and great fuel economy. That's why my advice to you is to buy a new Honda. Looking pre-owned, visit our Honda Certified Used Car Center. Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard, Liverpool, or hondacity-cny.com. It would be a pity if you don't shop. 
For all of us that have always wanted our favorite restaurant to come to us, it's now a reality in Central New York with It's a Utica Thing, with Utica Pizza Company bringing their wonderful recipes that they've handed down through generations to you, to your event, to your business, to your home. It's a Utica Thing, proudly bringing Utica Pizza Company on wheels to your location. Call 315-738-8946. That's 315-738-8946 to bring Utica Pizza Company to your doorstep with It's a Utica Thing. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Always happy to have the man Marvin Graves on the show speaking with us. Monday morning quarterback is the moniker, and we have changed it up a little bit, and my Monday morning quarterback is a quarterback of Syracuse history every Monday morning right around 9.15 a.m., Eastern time in the first hour of the show, and we're always happy to have Marvin on the broadcast. And right now, we got some positive stuff to talk about with the Orange. We got a win to talk about, which is always good for the fans out there for Orange Nation. Mr. Graves, how are we doing this morning? I'm doing great, Dan. I'm doing great. SU won, Redskins won in first place, so it's a good Monday morning. And let's start there before we get into the Q's, the Redskins. You know, this. This Redskins team has been strong this season. The NFC East has been has been somewhat confusing and, and somewhat strange. But here we are, you know, looking at these Washington Redskins, and despite the NFC East being not the uh, not the greatest and not looking the greatest, we look at you know how this Washington Redskins team has done. They're three and one at home. They're four and two overall. They have definitely taken care of home field advantage. They've defeated the Packers, the Panthers, and the Cowboys at home. What do you think about that? I think it's been great. Um, you know, we, defensively, we've been able to stay in football games because we've turned teams over. And uh, offensively, we just haven't hit our stride yet. So um, I'm, I'm really not too concerned about the offense. Adrian Peterson has been a – uh, a bright spot for us with the injury to, to Geis in preseason. So um, I think we'll peak at the right time, but yesterday was a great win. You brought up Adrian Peterson. You know, fans get excited about the fact that, you know, Adrian Peterson is is playing, the, is, is, is playing he's back, you know, he's doing his thing. Do you feel like he's back in, in the sense of, you know, the way he's played, he seems to fight for every single down. He seems to be very vibrant and very tenacious when he gets after it. He switched, you know, he, he, he was able to switch fields and go all the way to the left. Things weren't working out, was behind a pile, looked like he was going to lose a couple of yards, ends up turning his body around, breaking away, and grabbing a first down. I mean, I feel like we're seeing the Adrian Peterson that we were used to seeing a few years back with some of these moves and decision-making that he has. What do you think about it? I mean, I think you hit it right on the head, Dan. I mean, a lot of people don't realize he didn't play a lot of football last year. Um, you know, he had a few Some injuries good advice from injuries last year. The two classes- um, but, but he's getting back healthy. He had a few injuries this year, but the guy's in tip-top shape. And if we can just ma- uh, manage those injuries that he has, um, you, you see how the kid runs with the football. Um, he, he has a chip on his shoulder, and I think that's the type of attitude that our defense is bringing as well, and um, that, that's how we're playing right now. We're playing with a chip on our shoulder because the NFC East is wide open, and, and really we don't get a lot of respect around the league. No, and, and, and that's the thing is, you know, this Washington Redskins team and my buddy Joey, uh, who was over yesterday for my birthday, you know, he's a big-time Redskins fan, and, and we were just looking at, you know, the fact that, you know, this team, again, they play very well at home. They're doing what they need to do to get the job done, and, you know, they are where they are right now. Uh, the, the fumble return by Preston Smith helped create the separation that they needed. Dak Prescott had a touchdown with a minute 37 left in the game. And Washington was able to hold on and win the game twenty to seventeen. What do you like about about uh, Jay Gruden? I got to know Jay when he was in the UFL. He coached the Florida Tuskers, 
and I got to be around him and his brother, John Gruden, who's now the head coach of the Oakland Raiders. What do you like about Jay? Jay's been there a while. Is he somebody that was an acquired taste? Did you not like him and then you did? Did you like him the whole time? What's what's kind of your thought and your feeling on Jay Gruden, the head coach? Um, honestly, I you know, I think Jay Gruden is a is a good head coach. Um, me personally, I don't like him as our head coach. I just don't think he has that that attitude that that we want here in DC. Um, but you know, he is our head coach, so. Um, I think the, I think he works really hard. I think that offensively, um, I think he's doing a pretty decent job calling the plays. I just think our offense hasn't really gelled yet with all the injuries that we've had. Alex Smith coming over from Kansas City, uh, all the weapons that he had, I think these guys are still gelling. You know, we don't have a preseason like we, we really need. So a lot of times it takes offenses a little bit longer to – uh, kind of get going and hit their stride than, than the defense. So, you know, right now I think um, Alex Alex understands that, you know, there's some improvement um, that needs to be um, worked on. And I think, like I said, if we can peak at the right time and win these ugly games, I think it'll not only give the team confidence, but uh, I think it'll give Jay Gruden confidence as well. So, um, you know, in a perfect world, we can have whatever we want, but um, – you know, I'm, I'm okay with Jay Gruden right now. That coming from Marvin Graves, our Monday morning quarterback, taking the moniker and turning it into a real thing with our Monday morning quarterback every single Monday here on Wake Up Call with Dan Satori in the first hour. You're listening on the live stream, mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt. And some of you are listening to that live stream directly on wakeupcalldt.com where it is embedded as well. So let's get into Syracuse. We, we've spoken a little bit about your skins. Congratulations on 4-2. and two. The Jaguars, who I'll talk about in the second hour, the wheels have completely, almost completely fallen off, if not completely. But Syracuse got back on the winning side of things. They had their bye week. They they started 4-0. and oh, Then they went 0-2. Oh then they had the bye week. And they found a way to win. And I said, you know, being from Syracuse, it was an early birthday gift for me. I was at the Dome watching the game, and uh, it was a it was a tremendous game to watch right before the birthday. What can you say about the game? We're, we're going to paint a broad picture, so to speak, and then we'll get a, a little more serious about some of these things that happen within the game. But overall, what did you think of the game? Um, I, I kind of thought that, um, you know, coming off the bye, that, you know, Syracuse may start a little slow. Um, and, and I think I really wasn't expecting North Carolina to play that well, to be honest, but I, I think like we've talked about before, is there's so much parity in college football. It was just a great football game to watch. And I think coming out on the winning side of it always feel better. But, you know, you saw two football teams out there that's really trying to, uh, you know, move up in, into being one of the top uh, programs, being mentioned among the top programs in the country. And, um, you know, if you pay for a ticket, you got your money's worth. So it, overall, it was a great game. Obviously, we won, so that makes it better. And, um, you know, I think this could be a springboard for the rest of the season. When you look at a game like that for Syracuse and, and, and you know, their their ability to, to stick with it and not give up and ultimately get the victory, it was against North Carolina, who last year was a bottom feeder of the ACC, the only team worse record-wise of 14 schools than Syracuse last year was North Carolina. They have obviously gotten a better running game, but they've continued to struggle. They've been at the bottom of the Coastal, and Syracuse has been at the bottom of the Atlantic. Syracuse gets that victory in double overtime. They get the win. Obviously, the win's important, but does it concern you at all that they had to go to double overtime against a team that has had a lot of recent struggles? Uh be honest with you that there's going to be concerns every week um as as we're building and and looking to improve um but every week brings a different challenge and you know again and those guys practice just like we practice so um they they hear the noise about you know their record in past years and the struggles that they've had you know they they play well against the virginia tech team um 
uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, you know they they've been in a couple of a ball games. So um, I, I just think that you know there's a lot of parity in college football, and um, every every week brings just a different monster. So. Um, as long as those guys continue to fight and not give up like they did, when you can bring your backup quarterback in the game and, and, and can produce, you know, that's what that's what the team is about. And, um, you know, hats off to, to Syracuse uh, for winning this week. And, you know, we'll just take it one week at a time. And you talk about, speaking here in Marvin Graves, bringing in Tommy DeVito. I was sitting up in the press box and, you know, obviously uh, coming out of the second half, Eric Dungy, was able to uh, get a touchdown for the team, you know, on that first drive of, you know, very, and, and that, you know, to me that was huge. On the very per- first play of the second half, Dungy dropped back and aired it out to Custis down the right sideline. Uh, North Carolina sophomore corner, Greg Ross, I thought this was an interesting play. Greg Ross nudged Custis forward, accidentally helping him. So it looked like Dungy had overthrown him or Jamal Custis just wasn't running fast enough down the field, and Greg Ross pushed Custis. He kind of gave him a little nudge, and that got him up field a little bit farther, which got the ball in his hands. He had a 68-yard gain. And then after a holding penalty on North Carolina, moved Syracuse ahead 10 yards to the 16-yard line. Dungy would throw behind Moneal, and there was almost an interception. But on the very next play, Dungy looked to run, uh, seemingly in trouble in the backfield, but was able to get a 16-yard touchdown. After that drive, after the 68-yard pass, almost throwing an interception and then running it in from 16 out, Eric Dungy led the offense to five straight punts, a fumble, and another punt. And I'm sitting up in the press box saying, put in Tommy DeVito. Not because I don't like Eric Dungy, I respect the hell out of him, but because the team wasn't moving the ball. The team wasn't getting anything done. There's something about that Florida State game when DeVito stepped in. And there's obviously something about this game against North Carolina. I said, even if you didn't take him out for the rest of the game, take out Dungy so that he can get out of his own head. Stop doing something so the coaching staff can talk to him so that he can shake it off. Because it was was a downward spiral of just trying to save the world and be Superman, and it wasn't working. Syracuse finally through osmosis, maybe, uh, spe- you know, speaking brain to brain, said, okay, let's put in Tommy DeVito. And they put in Tommy DeVito. The man drops back and throws a dart down the field. And here we are with, you know, a guy who ended with three touchdowns in the game to one interception. He had a better completion percentage than Dungy, 57.9 to 51.5. He was 11 for 19 for 181 yards. Just what you can say about Syracuse's decision to put in Tommy DeVito, and if you feel like it came at the right time, was it a little bit too late, in your opinion, despite the win? Just what you thought about the switch? Because you don't, you don't typically see Syracuse switch out a guy who's healthy. I mean, I, I think you got to give uh, Dino a lot of credit. I mean, how many coaches around the country would make that move? And I think it just speaks volumes to the preparation um, of not only the starters, but, you know, guys that, that, that come in as backups. And, you know, you got to give you got to give the kid credit as well to be ready to step into a situation like that and produce. So, um, you know, I, I, I think it's, you know, to be honest with you, a ballsy call uh, to put the backup quarterback in. And, you know, I respect that. I respect that. And I think what it, it sends a message to the team saying, if you're not getting the job done, you know, we have someone that can come in and and produce, we'll put them in. So I think that, that creates more competition in practice so guys know that I may get a chance to play. I got to have my teammates back. Putting in Tommy DeVito, at that, like you said, it was a gutsy call. How many coaches around the country are going to make it? I agree with you whole, wholeheartedly on that. What did you think about – what was happening with Dungy? I brought up the Superman approach. It seems like he always wants to do it all by himself. He'll drop back and seemingly not give himself enough time to even see if a receiver's open, let alone to survey the field. Drops back, looks really quick, and then takes off. He likes to run. Calling his own number as much as he does 
What do you think about that? Because, yeah, sometimes he'll break open a 60-yard run, but a lot of times this season it's not helping. So, you know, what? I mean, you were a quarterback for Syracuse. He seemingly has the mentality of he has to do it, he has to save the day. What's your takeaway about that? Well, I think uh, it's funny that you asked that question because as I'm watching the game, um, I kind of compared him to a young Brett Favre. And not saying that Dungy has the arm of Brett Favre or anything like that, but, you know, that kid just goes out and plays like he's on the playground. And you got to kind of live with what you have. Um, Some of those things can be improved upon as far as, you know, reads and decisions and things like that. That has to happen, you know, in practice um, as far as putting him in situations where, you know, he has to make reads, he has to make throws. Uh, because he won't always be able to get out of the pocket. And like you said, sometimes it's hurt Syracuse this year. But, you know, just like Brett Favre, you know, a guy that came out of a college not even knowing what cover two is that could just sling it around, you, you love him for the great plays that he make and then some of the plays that um, the throws that he make or the, or the runs in Dungy's case that he takes off and run, you're scratching your head. So, um, I think that's just something that offensively the coaching staff and, um, you know, he can, you know, watch film and kind of point out those things. And then you have to work on them in practice. So, But the kid's a gamer, man. And, you know, to have two quarterbacks, um, like I said, it creates competition. And, you know, it, it, it lets guys know that, you know, you got to come to work every week and you got to come ready to play. So um, it, it's been a rough slide with him. But, I, I still believe that he can improve upon it. Because when you see a guy come in the game that can produce, you have to step your game up. So the coaching staff is in a good situation as far as the quarterbacks. So, I mean, when you look at this situation and you look at, you know, what he's doing and like and just his his desire to run and to run a lot of the time, just what your takeaway is is from that. Because it seems that that is what he enjoys. That 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 is his first choice. As a quarterback, that is the direction that he typically goes in. And, I mean, there's there's guys that, that may be open downfield, but he's not looking in their direction because he wants to run the ball. You know, fans love when he, like I said, when he can break away. But being a quarterback that, that likes to run and likes to run often and is run first, pass second – just, I mean, you, like I said, you're a former quarterback. You played for Syracuse. It, it seems like his option is run run 90% of the time, throw 10% of the time. What do you think about, you know, his decision-making? Because he's not the guy to drop back and, and look at three different receivers. He's the guy to maybe look at one and then take off. Yeah, and I mean, um, you know, uh, w- one thing I'll say is um, you never know what's happening back there in the pocket as far as, you know, what he's seeing as far as pressure and uh, throwing lanes being cut down or um, so, so I try not to judge, you know, too many quarterbacks as far as that, you know, being in that pocket and and watching it, you know, and looking at it and analyzing it on Monday morning is two different things. But, you know, as a quarterback and and the time that I've had um, learning the position and coaching the position, um, it's an ongoing thing as far as read progression. And like I said, that's that's something that can be worked on in-house. And, um, you know, that's that's on the coaching staff and that's on Dungy to get better at that. So, um, you know, the kid is what he is right now, but the improvement is, is something that can happen. It's not rocket science. And I think that, you know, it just comes down to, you know, film study and and working on those read progressions, just getting through the read progressions as as much as possible. Um, You know, you get your pre-snap reads, you get your post-snap reads, and, you know, that that just takes work. That takes time, and and you got to keep putting the work in to get better at that. Speaking here with my guy Marvin Graves, Monday morning quarterback, the last time Syracuse was 4-0 to start the season was back in 1991, thanks to this man and his company, so this team started 4-0, 0-2. Now they're 1-0 and moving forward 5-2 and overall. So I ask you, Marvin, as a former quarterback and as somebody 
who has done what these guys are doing and tried to lead a team as these guys are doing. Who do you start against NC State, Tommy DeVito or Eric Dungy? I start Eric Dungy. Um, you know, he's the guy that uh, went down to Death Valley and, and gave us a chance to win that football game. Um, he's the starter, and, and DeVito's the backup. And I feel like, uh, again, it, it creates competition. You know, if I'm if I'm Dungy and I'm going into this week of preparation, I know that there's a guy that's over there waiting uh, to get on that field and, and produce. So um, it's a good situation to have uh, because nobody gets lax. But at this point in time, you know, I, I would start Dungy and – you know, knowing that I have a guy that can come in. Hey, like you said, if it's first quarter and, and we're struggling, you know, maybe you pull Dungy out for a series or two, and then you can put him back in. To have that luxury at quarterback, you can ask any coach in the country. It, it's a great situation to have. And uh, Dungy, or Dungy, pardon me, DeVito had something up this morning, and I want to uh, read it here to you on his Twitter page. His handle is at Tommy DeVito 7 it says, sprinkle of Jesus, go get it. Say a prayer, catch a praise, and go out and get the opportunities you prayed so hard for. This man has worked diligently for opportunities. He's sitting and he's waiting on the sideline. There's, you know, we've, we've seen backup quarterbacks for Florida State, and their fourth stringer is supposed to be a starter, you know, for teams in, in you know, half of the country and whatnot. You know, teams like Alabama, their worst player would be the best player on another team. There's always that notion. Tommy DeVito came in and automatically helped Syracuse. Auto, I mean, almost immediately through that, you know, that, that long bomb down the field. I mean, we're looking at a guy who didn't look cold, didn't look like he needed time to get to get comfortable. I want to speak on his 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 preparedness because Tommy DeVito, to me, is doing something that not only has Syracuse not seen a lot of, but in general, we don't see this. You don't see this around, okay, Tua Tagovailoa did it for Alabama, but, you know, Florida State had nobody behind DeAndre Francois doing it. Who, you know, when, when you look at Tom, Tony, Tommy Dungy, or Tommy Dungy, oh my God, this morning has been crazy. When you look at Tommy DeVito... <laughs> It's, I swear, you know, and, and, and the thing is, I had my birthday yesterday. I didn't drink. I didn't do anything stupid. I had Coke Zero. But Tommy DeVito, when, when you watch him play, just, just to speak as a former quarterback on how well prepared he must be and just how calm, cool, and collected because he's waiting for his turn and he comes out there and he's throwing strikes and completing multiple passes in a row. I think he completed his first four or five passes in a row on his first drive. Yeah, I mean, again, it, it just, you know, I've been a backup quarterback, um, you know, when my time in the CFL and even my time <clears throat> coaching um, at, at Catholic University and some of the high schools. And, um, you know, being a backup is, is not an easy job. Um, but, when a guy comes in and he's prepared, um, you know you you have to you have to look at the coaching staff and you have to look at the kid individually, being ready to step in and play. That's why you call it a team. You know, um, you know it, it's really nothing else to say. The kid is poised. Um, I think I said it before on one of the earlier shows. I think you see why he was recruited, and to be one of the top programs to become one of the top programs in the country you have to have depth so um i, I don't think it's a knock on on dungy they're just two different style quarterbacks and and they both shown that they can win football games so for a defense now you have two quarterbacks to prepare for you know that's more film work that's more um preparation and practice uh on different different types of things that um you want teams to have to prepare for. So um, I think it's a great situation. And, again, I think, you know, if I'm Dungy, I'm, I'm thinking, hey, you know, I'm looking over my shoulder like I need to show why that I'm the starting quarterback of this team and I need to make some more plays. So um, very poised, um, um, ready to play, 
And you, you want people like that in your program that, that stays positive because, you know, a guy like that could easily be a bad apple on the sideline. So um, hats off to the coaching staff and him for being ready. And, you know, this was a very, very important win for the program. Speaking here with Marvin Graves and wrapping things up, you said you would start Eric Dungy in your mind. You know, he's the starter. So if he struggles – where do you draw the line? You know, is it a turnover? Is it two, three, four drives in a row? If he comes out, because Dungy has struggled to play a complete game, and arguably he has not played well for a complete game against strong competition all season. So where do you draw the line with Dungy? When do you say, all right, number th- 13, it's time to go in for number two? What, if you were the coach, when do you kind of look at that in the upcoming game, how long do you let it bleed before you make a switch? Uh, you know, that's definitely um, a series-by-series series call. I just feel like, um, you know, if we're not moving the ball, if we're not converting on third down, we're not getting first downs, I think you do it sooner than later. Um, and again, it's not to say, you know, he's benched and he's not going to play again, but... You know, you bring that guy in to make some plays to see, um, you know, if he can give the team a spark. And you can always reinsert, you know, Dungy back into the game. The other thing that, um, you know, I, I think would be interesting is, you know, Dungy's a tough guy. He loves to run. So let's why not put them both in there at the same time. Now, I'm not a coach, um, and I know those guys put in a lot of work, film study and so forth, but... You know, I say, hey, let's put both of those guys in there. And that's... You can, handle, you can run trick plays, so forth and so on. So, you know, the Baltimore Ravens kind of do it with Lamar Jackson a little bit. So, um, I think it's a good situation. I think that, you know, I think that Dungy uh, would be on the short leash because, you know, this is a big game. And I think, you know, we got to have our best players on the field. As long as those guys work together, I think, you know, they may both play next week. Well, you know, and I thought about that, too, is like the trick plays and the flea flickers and whatnot, those those would work out pretty darn well when you got two quarterbacks out there. So, you know, there, there could be the chance for something like that, at least one or two plays. I'd like to see that, and I'm, I'm happy that your head kind of went there, too, Marvin, because I can see – you know, there being a DeVito Dungy situation where the defense on the other side of it is completely confused as to what is happening and are they running and are they throwing and what are they both going to do and is Tommy going to try to run, is Eric going to throw. So, you know, I think that maybe it's worth trying once or twice. And Marvin, do we have you on here? Oh no, that's okay. I was just I was saying that the trick plays and the opportunities between Dungey and Devito, even if they tried it just once, would be cool to see what happened. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think um, Devito showed that he's ready to play, and and Dungey is he's tough as nails. So um, it, it just made me think that hey, well, this could be a situation where he is lined up in the backfield. You know, he is lined up out wide. Um, he could be a decoy, you know, because people are thinking trick play, and now you throw to the other side or you run the ball away from them. So um, I, I think it's a good situation to have. I think, you know, it's healthy competition. You know, DeVito's been ready. He's shown that he can come in and he has Dungy back. And if I'm a coach, I'm, I'm happy about that. You know, I'm not going to be down on, on Dungy because he's made a lot of good plays. I would just stress that we need a little more consistency out of you. But I think it definitely opens up the playbook to, to be able to have that flexibility to put both of those guys in the game at the same time. It's a defensive nightmare. That coming from Marvin Graves, Monday morning quarterback here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. As always, Marvin, I appreciate your time. Syracuse is 5-2, and two, a lot better than 4-3 and three on paper. It looks so much better. And one game away from becoming bowl eligible. And have broken their three-season streak of being 4-8 and eight with Schaefer's last season and the first two with Dino. I, as always, Marvin, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. And I look forward to talking with you soon. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you having me, and happy belated birthday. I hope you enjoyed your day.
Thank you, man. I'll talk with you soon. I'll talk to you soon. All right, take care. Take care. That coming from Marvin Graves once again, our Monday morning quarterback. Hear him live on the broadcast every single Monday at 9.15 a.m. Eastern Time. Always appreciate Marvin Graves and appreciate his thoughts and everything that uh, he has had to say. Really means a lot to me, and I thank him so much for all of his time. So God bless to Marvin, and you know the Syracuse conversation will continue after this fast break here on Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. Thanks for listening this morning. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or ice milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, carvalanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. Clothing that will change with you without you having to change. DrysigLady.com, D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G, Lady.com. With the bamboo line, relaxed fit clothing, as well as the athletic fit clothing, DrysigLady.com is fit for any woman, any time of the day, anywhere. Whatever you're doing, whatever your day commands of you, Command yourself to feel comfortable in Dreisig Lady Apparel. D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G Lady.com. For all the women out there, feel good in what you're wearing. And don't feel like you have to constantly change throughout the day. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom, a business owner, going for a jog, going for a meeting, or just relaxing at home, DreisigLady.com is the right fit for you. D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G, lady.com. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. Call our home office at 315-752-9513, or better yet, call or text me directly at 315-748-2524. Let me ask you a question, Lawrence. If I needed you to help me buy a house, find the right place, could you help me do that? Joe, I'll help you find your dream home. You don't ever say my name on the radio, never. If I needed to sell a house, could you help me go about that the right way? Yes, yes I can. How do they get a hold of you? Call me directly at 315-748-2524. But you also do the commercial property. So if I got a business, couple businesses, got to take one here, move it over there, do this, do that. Are you going to help me buy and sell my commercial property also? Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. What's my name again? I have no idea. Absolutely. But they need to know your name. So give it one more time. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. My phone number is 315-748-2524. Why don't you tell him your name one more time and that number so we can jot it down. This is Lawrence Papaleo. Call me or text me directly at 315-748-2524. spreading in historic Herald Square about Syracuse's favorite sports and entertainment venue, the Press Room Pub, with lots of room next to 450 parking spots. Wash down their delicious 9-ounce burger for $9.95 with a variety of New York State brewed beers. TVs abound all throughout the location, including their 90-inch monster. Watch your game enjoy time with family friends as well as bringing the kids to the playroom the SU alumni party for every away football game is making headlines as well as Robert Drummond Syracuse football alum and Dan Satora's pre-game show two hours before kickoff for every home game private parties available as well for as many as 300 people Come circulate at the Press Room Pub, downtown Syracuse, and visit PressRoomPub.com right now for more information. Thank you for listening into part one of this episode, episode 190 of 2018. Make sure you listen into part two coming up next. 
with On the Prowl Jacksonville Jaguars coverage.